Evening, ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Start to the college basketball season. Hey, get your popcorn. You know what time it is. Game time. Let's get it. Woo! We're just having the time of our life in this building. Four teams, two games, BK80, baby. Oh, stop it. Yo, Phil Knight, it's your birthday. Yes. Whatever. Throw it down. Hello. It's got to be the shoes. Oh, my. It's Mr. Winston's show right now. Ballers. Shot callers. Florida in the championship. Allen. Make a wish. Make a switch. 80 candles lit for the PK-80. Just do it, y'all. It's the PK-80 presented by State Farm, and it is the championship game of the victory bracket. Number nine, North Carolina against number four, Michigan State. The first of two championship games at the Moda Center tonight at the PK-80. Coming up later, it'll be Duke against Florida. Look at the victory bracket, North Carolina. A win over Arkansas on Friday to get to this championship game while Michigan State ran past UConn. So it's the Tar Heels and the Spartans meeting in the victory bracket championship. The motion bracket coming up later, number one Duke against number seven Florida. Welcome inside the Moda Center along with the Hall of Famer, Phil Walton. I'm Roxy Bernstein and we have a tremendous matchup for you in this championship game. North Carolina, Michigan State. Bill, an unbelievable weekend of basketball here in Portland. Roxy, championship day is what we all live for. The buildup has been better than perfect. And we're all so fortunate that none of the volcanoes have erupted to disrupt this incredible ceremony that's about to take place. So we've all come inside right now. The explosion is going to happen, and we're so fortunate because we've got incredible players, teams, coaches, athletic directors, and it's going to start in the backcourt for both of these squads. For Michigan State, they've got Cash Winston, who's absolutely spectacular. This guy went wild on Friday night and just had a remarkable game. His game against UConn, was nothing short of spectacular. Penetration, finishing at the rim. Step back jumpers. Completely blew open. A, t a game that was tied at the half and turned it into a laugher. And then on the other side for North Carolina, you've got Joel Berry, who is just such a special player in every aspect, not a statistical phenom. Not an athletic gift from the gods, but a mental, a spiritual, a disciplined, focused leader who plays only to win. And he's got tons of players with him, including Luke May, who has been the individual performer of this PK-80, the inaugural one. We can only hope there are many more to come. But Luke May's ability to light it up, jumpers, rebounds, passes, fast breaks, defense, Everything going for this young man who's not so young anymore now a junior in his third year for Roy Williams and the Tar Heels What he has done statistically has just been spectacular and he represents all that's good in basketball in terms of Growth development maturity leadership playing for the greater good of the team He's not alone. They got tons of guys out there. You got Garrison Brooks Sterling Manning Manley, excuse me, Kenny Williams. It's an endless list for the defending champions. Well, joining us tonight, Jeff Goodman working with us as well. And Jeff, an update on Miles Bridges, who's starting tonight for Michigan State. Miles Bridges didn't play in the first game, came off the bench in the second game. He will start tonight. He told me yesterday that he's probably at about a 90%. And the most difficult thing for him tonight to watch will be how he stays in front of North Carolina's athletic players on the defensive end. Well, Jeff, he sprained his ankle against Stony Brook their last game before coming to Portland. And as Jeff pointed out, didn't play in their opener, which was a win here on Thursday against DePaul, then returned off the bench in their win Friday. And Jaron Jackson gets the opening tip. What a diamond in the rough. So we're ready for our Sonic blockbuster matchup between number nine, North Carolina, and number four, Michigan State. The first of two 
championship games here tonight. Still to come, Duke and Florida in the motion bracket title game. Luke May on the floor early. Joel Berry in transition. Theo pins into the basket, and it's Carolina that's on the board first. During the break, Roxy, I did hear from Ben and Jerry. They're willing to look at the new Joel Berry flavor. It's nice when you have that connection that you just get stuff done, isn't it? Competitive greatness. Be at your best when your best is needed. And that's right now. The championship. These Tar Heels have been there before. Tom Izzo has never beaten Roy Williams while Roy has been the head coach at North Carolina. A travel called against Garrison Brooks. And the challenge is going to be for the Spartans to come up with that physical impact control of the game. North Carolina has more players. They have taller players with the exception of Jaron Jackson. But if Michigan State can control the tempo, if they can control the boards, if they can pound it inside, if they can stay out of foul trouble and not expose the fact that they don't have as many players as Roy Williams, then they've got a real chance. Nick Ward goes over the back of foul on Michigan State. As the all-time meetings, North Carolina's won 12 of the 15 matchups between these two programs, including each of the last seven, as Tom Izzo and Michigan State lost to North Carolina in the national title game back in 2009. If I'm North Carolina, I want to make this just the fastest game possible. They don't have the strength and the power or the physical maturity. Miles Bridges missing the three on the push. Here comes North Carolina and Kenny Williams. And he left it short. Here's Cash Winston, Winston counters. Counters. right here. Beautiful push to Langford. And Michigan State is on the board. Joshua Langford hits a three. And right back up the backs of the Spartans. Joel Berry always pushing that ball, but the, the sense of pace, which really comes from his dad, a former player himself. Joel Berry's dad, who's Joel Berry won. But here's Cash Winston pushing that ball. And with Langford finding that line, they get that kind of shot, Tom Izzo's going to take it. But if I'm Tom Izzo, I want to I want to get to the free throw line today. Offensive foul on the screen, out of bounds. When you're a screener, just stay set. You don't have to move. It's the guy who's receiving the screen. It's his responsibility to make that screen an effective one. It's on Kenny Williams. Cassius Winston brings it up for Michigan State. The Spartans at 4-1, North Carolina 5-0. Incredible crowd here tonight at the Moda Center. Celebrities lining the court here. And a turnover by the Spartans. Here comes Theo Pinson. Nice pass. Drops it off to Joel Berry and the follow by Pinson. Theo Pinson, the emotional leader of this team. Theo Pinson, who's just suffered through a series of uh, nagging stress injuries to his feet over the course of his career at Chapel Hill. Beautiful pass there by Bridges. Miles Bridges from the top. Who's going to be the first guy to all the loose balls today? The sense of anticipation that really defines Phil Knight's business career. Rebound by Nick Ward, a tough shot from Luke May. Phil and his wife Penny are sitting courtside here. Joshua Langford with five of the Spartans' eight, and they're up four. The row here is basically called Nike Row. Senior executives across the board. Eric Lattenbach, Lattenbach, excuse me. Lynn Merritt. They're all here looking for George Raveling soon. Outstanding defense for Miles Bridges. Shot clock inside 10 for the Tar Heels. Deep yeah. three from May. And the rebound, Miles Bridges at Michigan State. When you're up against a shot clock, drive it to somebody else's defensive man so he can get a better look, not have to recreate himself. Pound it inside. Give it to Nick Ward down there. Winston loses the handle. 
kicked out of bounds. It's a North Carolina basketball. Come on, I want to find out if for Michigan State if anybody can guard Nick Ward and Miles Bridges, Jared Jackson down exclusive low. exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by State Farm. Talk to an agent today. 800 State Farm and a part by one and all from Nike Basketball. You're watching ESPN Sonic Blockbuster, North Carolina, Michigan State championship game of the victory bracket at the PK-80 at the Moda Center in Portland, Oregon, as we take a look at our Sonic Blockbuster and the sixth meeting between these two schools, Bill, when both are ranked in the top ten. UNC, very good at pounding it inside over the top, depth, talent, size, length. Michigan outstanding on the defensive end and shutting down the other team's offense in the paint. Roy Williams, the Hall of Famer. Oh my gosh, what a run. Trying for his third straight Final Four. Only been done once before in the history of UNC basketball. That was in 67, 68, 69. All three championships won by Kareem in UCLA. Score is now 7-4 during the timeout. They reviewed a three from Miles Bridges. It was ruled a three on the floor, but during the timeout, it's corrected. It was a two. 7-4, Michigan State. Roy Williams substituting again. Stepped out of bounds, Joel Berry. A sense of where you are. The North Carolina with wins here over Portland as they put up a season high 102 points here on Thursday, which was the first game of this PK-80. And then on Friday, just steps away at the Glass Palace, the Memorial Coliseum. They dispatched Arkansas 87-68 in a huge game for Luke May. Nice to see Miles Bridges moving so fluidly and effortlessly. Missed so much time already with that sprained ankle. A pull up and a foul as Kenny Williams foul from behind will go to the line. Tum Tum Nairn in the game for Michigan State. Also checking in is Gavin Schilling for the Spartans. While for North Carolina, Sterling Manley comes in, so does Brandon Robinson. Tum Tum, the emotional leader for Tom Izzo. A senior on a team filled with sophomores and freshmen. So did you have the chance to read the Sports Illustrated cover story on Miles Bridges? I have not read it, actually. Really? But you might prepare. <laughs> I did some reading to prepare. I just didn't happen to read that article. He's only the cover boy for college basketball this year. Excuse me. He's certainly one of them. <laughs> well, we're going to find out to tonight. Schilling inside. In Schilling. Quite the story for Schilling. Born in Germany, raised in France. Steal by Joel Berry. Sets it wide by Jaron Jackson Jr. That's the kind of play that will turn this game around in a heartbeat. Beautiful play, Jaron Jackson. Matt McQuay from the corner. Matt McQuay did not play in Friday. He had 20, a career high against DePaul on Thursday, making six threes. Spent yesterday on the bench. Joel Berry tries to turn the corner and a foul on the floor against Michigan State, their third team foul. When Joel Berry makes this play, he'll learn over time you, you can't come all the way underneath the basket to jump up. Think of Duquesne's great player, Norm Nixon, Gonzaga's great player, John Stockton, the best I ever saw at that play there. Take off from just inside the foul line and lean out and shoot it up as opposed to coming underneath and jumping up. Ben Carter checks in for Michigan Traveling. State and a travel on Theo Pinson. Also in for North Carolina, Andrew Playtech. Good outside shooter, the freshman. Six turnovers now for North Carolina. Who will guard the advance of the ball for Michigan State? Because North Carolina, you, you don't want to wear Joel Berry out, but they have so many other guards who can just get up on the dribbler and just make him turn his back, take time off the clock. Joshua Langford attacking now as seven of the 12 for Michigan State. A reminder that 
Great Motion defense. bracket championship coming up next between number one Duke and number seven Florida. Whoa. Heat check there. The offense looks discombobulated for the Tar Heels. They're struggling. Just two of ten shooting the ball in North Carolina. And with six turnovers. It's been a rough go of it for Roy Williams. They did get off to a slow start in their win against Arkansas on Friday before they settled in and then ran past the Razorbacks. The Tar Heels have not been tested here. And this is a, a, you know, an incredible era of college basketball when you have so many non-conference games between the premier schools. North Carolina, one of the teams is legendary in a historical sense and in a current sense. Well, beautiful pass, Ben Carter. Gavin Schilling lays it in, 14-6, Michigan State. And with so many substitutes for the Tar Heels, North Carolina is having a ton of trouble getting any sort of rhythm. Beautiful back cut, don't pump fake that ball. And off the window, Andrew Playtech ends a 7 0 Michigan State run. When your game is quickness, don't take it away by pump faking. Playtech again makes it happen on the defensive end. And the charge on Joshua Langford. There's a nice tall screen up there that you bring in. The field guy on the high post and just dump it right inside the high low interchange unstoppable if you execute and Ben Carter can execute grew up in Las Vegas started at Oregon transferred to UNLV had a solid career two injuries though to that knee have really slowed things down great family guy from Las Vegas granted a sixth year by the NCAA because of the season's loss to injury what's the most years ever played by a guy in NCAA basketball. I'm going to guess six years. It's hard to get more than that. It's hard to get six years. And an offensive foul for posting up inside off the ball. That's two on Jaron Jackson. So then try to figure this out. Riddle me this. You got Josh Langford, a guard for Tom Izzo. How many years did you go to high school? Four. Okay. So he was five times state high school player of the year in Alabama five times once when he was in eighth grade so he played high school ball when he was in eighth grade that's what I'm told I wasn't there I've been to Huntsville but I wasn't there for his eighth grade year spinning is Theo Pinson Theo across the key six for Pinson When you take Jaron Jackson out of the game, North Carolina should just go to the hoop every single time. McQuaid from the corner and the offensive rebound, Nick Ward. Because as good as Nick Ward and Miles Bridges are, they're not going to get in the air to block shots. Ward again on the glass. Beautiful. Rattles out, but Ward to the line for the Spartans. The story of Nike, pursuit of excellence, persistence, perfection. Coming up, another installment. It's Walton's World. We're in your town, Bill. We're in Portland. I love Portland. I love donuts. Voodoo time. Here we go. Bill, welcome to Voodoo Donut. We're what here in downtown Portland. What a privilege honor. Trace, Cat Daddy, great to, great to see you what guys. A, what man. a treat to have you here in the our place. This place looks better than ever. How many locations now? We have six locations, uh, Mr. Walton. Throughout the universe? <laughs> uh, throughout the universe. Oh. What do we got? Let's, let's see what we got. We got what do we oh, got it, here, Cat Daddy? I think there's one magical one in here. This this might bring back some memories, I think. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, come on. No, yeah, it's so tough. Oh, it's look at to, that. Look at that. Taking a bite out of the Blazers. Old school. We know you're a fan, Bill, of... What, a voodoo? Like, oh, my God, there look you at go. this. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, my God. How awesome is that? There you go. There's a resemblance. <laughs> I love voodoo. Well, I know how they look, Bill. How do they taste? They taste awesome. The magic is in the hole. And all the different locations that they have, a cash-only business. And so while we've been celebrating the business and success and incredible run that, that Nike has had, Nike stock since they went public in 2000, excuse me, 1980, so 37 years, up 31,000%. That's a good investment. Speaking and I of missed Nike, out at the beginning. Phil Knight will join us at the beginning of the second half. But the six locations for Voodoo, 
Eugene, we've been there many times. Denver, been there many times. Austin, Texas, we were there last year. Universal Studios, when you get a retail outlet at Universal Studios, you're doing it. And then there's one in Taipei. Really? That would be in Asia, on the island of Taiwan. Did you ever read any of James Clavell's books? Oh, Theo. Spins out for Pinson. Here comes Michigan State. Michigan State wants to push the ball, but when they push it, pound it inside. What's the free throw attempts in this game so far? So far, two for Michigan State and two for the Tar Heels. Not enough for Michigan State. Their game is going to be push and shove and, oh, beautiful. What's Miles up? Bridges, a three. It's the best game I've ever seen Miles Bridges play. It's also the first game you've seen Miles Bridges play. Both of those statements are accurate. But you've seen him practice. That's different. And he was uh, protecting his ankle when he was practicing, as he should. Send it back, Nick Ward. Send it back again. And Tom Izzo loves the effort. I love the sophomore big man, Nick Ward. I love the results. Nick Ward, 6'8", from Gahana, Ohio, in the Columbus area. Grateful Dead played there last night. Jaron Jackson's also, no, he, Jaron Jackson's from Carmel, Indiana. Here's Luke May, who's been quiet so far. And the rebound, Cassius Winston and the Spartans. It's Sterling Manley that's from Columbus. Inside to Ward. Yeah, and Nick cool. Ward. And Michigan State has doubled up North Carolina. And Michigan State has controlled this game from the outset, and they've kept the Tar Heels from getting into any sort of offensive flow or rhythm. And this is where the leadership of Pinson, Barry, Williams, and May have to take over. And Luke May off balance and a foul inside. And it's on Michigan State. Post-entry passing, this is what guards are for. The ability of Cash Winston to get it right there into his wheelhouse, bring it to his left hand so he can hitch to the baseline, freeze Luke May, and then roll right inside. Acknowledgement to the help that's been provided along the way. And a second foul on Miles Bridges, who has to check out, as we're just about midway through the first half in Michigan State on a 13-4 run. Ooh. Another oh. North Carolina turnover. That is seven for the Tar Heels. Sadly, this is not Luke May's best day. And he, he was the best individual performer coming in to the championship game of the victory bracket. He had 28 points, 16 rebounds, five assists against Arkansas on Friday. Nobody has had the kind of start to a season for North Carolina that Luke May has had since the days of Antoine Jameson. 20 years ago. Beautiful pass, Pinson. And Kenny Williams draws a foul. We'll get to the line for North Carolina. I had no idea that Nick Ward had that kind of hops, that he could elevate like that. Did you have hops like that? No. I was rooted to the floor. Kenny Williams, now seven of seven make it nine of nine at the line this season and three of three at the strike tonight when Theo Pinson went down a year ago mid-season they thought that the dream of a championship was lost but he was only forced to miss three games it was another one of those stress reactions and boy when he came back the team just lit up Joel Berry races up the floor. But people aren't running with it. And he lost it going up. And here comes Michigan State on the counter. Winston missing the pull-up. McQuaid, great ball movement catch. Langford a three. Ten for Joshua Langford. The lead is 11. Where's the leadership on the court for the Tar Heels? Xavier Tillman in the game for Michigan State with a rebound. And Lankford drives and a block is called. And Lankford will head to the line. And the foul is on Kenny Williams, his second. 
Michigan State is the more physically developed team, the more powerful team. Right now, they're the more they're the more disciplined team. Let's check in with Jeff. Tom Izzo told me last night that one of the reasons uh, they were struggling was because the ball wasn't moving. The offense was stagnant tonight. Completely different. They're moving the basketball. They're sharing it. That was his biggest concern coming in. Good point, Jeff, because they've assisted on eight of their nine field goals so far. And a 12-point lead for Michigan State. Joshua Langford off to a good start. He averages just under 12 points a game, and he already has 11. Michigan State's already played Duke this year. They lost that game in a game that Miles Bridges was just getting started, and he just didn't have the assertiveness necessary to be, play the role of the star. He has vowed to correct that error. But when you're the star player, you can't come out and, and wait for the game to come to you. Eighth North Carolina turnover. Lankford a three. Pinson and the rebound. Everywhere. Garrison Brooks for the Tar Heels. Roy Williams has not gotten enough out of his four freshman bigs. Luke May's got to finish here. He'll get two free throws. As North Carolina trying to get going. They have struggled coming out of the blocks here. There's just four of 22, 18% from the floor. They have missed all six of their three-point attempts. And eight turnovers. Other than that, it's all fine. <laughs> And that's the first point of the night Luke for Luke May, May. Luke May, an outstanding student. He's in North Carolina's excellent undergraduate business school. He's also part of a historical trivia question. He and his brother Cole, younger brother Cole, are the only brother combination in the history of the NCAA to have won the basketball championship and the baseball title in the same year. Cole, a pitcher, for the Florida Gators, last year's NCAA champs on the diamond. Michigan State ball, it's been all Spartan so far. Joshua Langford leads the way. He's got 12, getting it done from inside and outside. Right now, it's the Spartans who are feasting here, and the North Carolina Tar Heels trying to somehow find a way to scrape the turpentine off the bottom of their feet. At the PK-80 coming up, it'll be our second championship game, the motion bracket title tilt between number one Duke and number seven Florida. That's coming up next here at the Moda Center in Portland. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis will have that one for you. It should be a tremendous ball game in what's been an unbelievable weekend of basketball here in Portland and Michigan State playing at a high level in this championship game. This tournament of champions is the greatest college basketball tournament ever. But the way that Michigan State is getting the ball to their bigs down low, shilling this time, excellent position, great use of his body. The next time up the court, the dribble to the middle, set up your defender, step back through, and then deliver it to Nick Ward, who's just been superb. Nick Ward has been the best player in this game tonight. It is tonight, right? It's been a quite a while since we've been here. It is tonight. Okay. Yes, it is nighttime. No matter where you're watching, well, it could be morning. In Shanghai. Sure. Where we were just a couple weeks ago. Four on the shot clock for Michigan State. Pinson is everywhere. And, and, and that's the good sign for Roy Williams and the Tar Heels. Because when he is involved in every single play, when he just keeps going, eventually the tide turns in North Carolina's favor. Just like you've ever standing out there on the Outer Banks. Oh my gosh, McQuaid. And a shot clock violation. That's a Michigan State turnover. You ever been to the Outer Banks? I have not been to the Outer Banks. Please. Read the story and get out more. Read the Miles Bridges Sports Illustrated cover boy story. College basketball, right? Okay. That's what we're here Thank for. You. Yeah. And the Outer Banks as well. They're really closing out on Luke May. Izzo, master defensive strategist, says we've got to shut down his easy opportunities. Who can create for the Tar Heels? Let's go. Here's Barry trying to do just that. Nick Ward, great closeout. Shot clock at two. 
Desperation shot no good from Garrison Brooks and the rebound for Ben Carter. I wonder what the number of that play was. Roy will not come back to it. Or it might be out of the playbook altogether. By the next possession. Carolina's just 4 of 23 but from the field. The, the problem that the Tar Heels have right now, they don't have anybody who can create right now. I mean, maybe over the course of the season they can develop that. Cassius Winston way off. Ben, ben Carter. Carter hustling for the offensive rebound. Look at Ben Carter. And seventh Woods on the deck for oh. North Carolina. So when Ben Tie Carter was, goes to North Carolina. When Ben Carter was playing for Oregon mm -hmm. in the Pac-12 Conference of Champions tournament in Las Vegas, he made against UCLA in one of the final games of the tournament that year, he made three or four spectacular plays to take the Bruins down and out. Oh, my gosh. Then he wasn't seeing enough playing time, so he went home to Las Vegas. He got hurt twice. Joel Berry with the hoop. First points for the senior Barry. Winston into the key. Beautiful. And the kick out to Lankford. Beautiful penetration. 15 for yeah. Joshua Lankford. So the style and the identity that we're seeing from the Spartans. Power and strength inside. Finesse on the perimeter. Luke May still can't get anything to drop. And a foul against the Tar Heels. And it's on Sterling Manley, his second. Coming up this week, it's the Big Ten ACC Challenge. Wednesday, we'll have Michigan taking on these number nine North Carolina Tar Heels in Chapel Hill at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's number one Duke in Indiana from Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Going to be another great night of hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app with the Big Ten ACC Challenge coming this week. One of the great lessons in life is Lankford lets it go again that we learned from the shoe dog. And there's Nick Ward. When you're up against the it, out. just keep going. It's like when you're climbing Mount Fuji, climbing Mount Hood. Beautiful. Ward Nick inside. Ward. Ward. Largest lead for Michigan State. Nick Ward's playing like Zach Randolph out there. Little flip shots, little runners, perfect position. Not out jumping everybody, but out thinking them and out positioning everyone. Offensive foul. And a block. The second on Matt McQuay. Oh, please. And North Carolina will head to the free throw line and Joel Berry. I guess he fouled him with his sternum. That's a block. That's the right call. That's okay. a block. He's still trying to slide over and get in position. No, he's not. He's backing up. And Joel Berry, okay, his shoulder was hitting him in the sternum. Please. He was still trying to slide over toward the baseline. Let Bill. me do that to you in the airport security line tomorrow morning, <laughs> and you tell me that <laughs> that's my foul, man. Come on. Well, if it's you coming into me, it'll be a charge. Clearly. You've lost your mind. That assumes <laughs> that well, assumes I've been a lot next of things. To you all weekend. I don't think that's a surprise <laughs> to anyone. Has it only been that long? I know it does feel like longer, doesn't it? Yes. One out of two for Barry. So you thought you ditched me in China. <laughs> Let's not go there, please. I, I had the time of my life in China. Ward oh. missing inside, and the rebound is Aaron Rollman checks in for the Tar Heels. Do we have a change in momentum here? Foul first before the shot. It's on Lankford, his second. If you're Tom Izzo, just tell the guys, don't look at the scoreboard. Keep track of the time, but play every possession. You're totally outplaying the national champions. You've got everything going in your favor. Don't pull it back. But Tom Izzo has some foul trouble. Lankford, Jackson, McQuaid, Bridges with two fouls each. And they don't have the depth. So far, they have superior skill. So far, so far they have superior identity and style. But the thing about North Carolina, they're never going to stop. So a great tournament so far for Luke May, who's trying to get on track in this championship game. What has he got right now for tonight? He has two points. That won't get it done. And three rebounds. Ouch. Seventh Woods off the deflection. Seventh, who I've learned his name comes from a spiritual background. Oh, my gosh. Deep three from Luke May. 
Out of bounds off of the Tar Heels. It belongs to Michigan State. But so, so every shot for Luke has been short. You got to change what you're looking at if that's the case. And you got to make that adjustment. He's too smart a guy, too good a player. Is that a tough adjustment to make in game? No. You just do it. <laughs> like Nike, you just do it. Oh, really? Is that where you got it? <laughs> what are you thinking? Please. We're sitting here in the presence of Phil and Penny Knight, of Eric Lottenbach, of Lynn Merritt, of Connor David George Lucas. is in for Michigan State. Beautiful play, Cash. Nice swing by Ben Carter. Nobody wants to shoot. Kenny Williams the steal. Misses the layup. Aaron Rollman in the lineup now for Roy Williams. Trying to find some sort of offensive spark. Cassius Winston his first point to the ball game and a 16 point lead for Michigan State. North Carolina looks physically intimidated. They're missing a lot of shots inside makeable well, hoops. Kenny Williams is an outstanding player. This is when your best player has to step to the front and say, okay, I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. Traveling violation. Ninth North Carolina turnover and a 16-point lead for the Spartans. The wheels have fallen off the train here. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. And in part by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. You know, he's a spot up shooter. What they've had is somebody who can create. Cash Winston has created the strength inside of Nick Ward. But this guy, Langford, has just been superb in every aspect. And, you know, the Spartans are playing with a chip on their shoulder. You know, they know they're playing against the legendary Tar Heels, who were the reigning champs. And they've been getting lots of pub coming in here playing fabulous ball. And the Spartans have handed it to him. You know, Tom Izzo, he's had seven Final Fours in the last 19 years. That's the best of any coach over that same stretch. He's had 20 straight NCAA appearances, Izzo had. Fourth longest ever and third longest active streak. And Magic Johnson spoke to the team on Tuesday before they came out here in East Lansing. Five to shoot for Michigan State. Winston. And a shot clock violation for the Spartans, and it goes over to Carolina. But Michigan State's defense has been outstanding in this game, Bill. Defense? Offense? Come on, man. They got 33 points against the reigning champions. Well, they're holding North Carolina to 5 of 27 from the floor. Oh. Count the basket and one for Luke May. His first shot from the field tonight. So if Luke May is going to miss a ton of layups, if Kenny Williams is going to miss a ton of layups, if Joel Berry you know, is going to be looking for ice cream instead of making jumpers and runners, Theo Pinson has not been able to do much. Luke May. What can you expect from the freshman? Luke May, two of four at the line. Foul was on Connor George of Michigan State. And May, another miss. And so when guys like Ben Carter and Xavier Tillman have come in from Tom Izzo, they've played superbly. Little Tum Tum is getting the job out done out there. He knows that life is a privilege. His saying is, it's not what we have to do, it's what we get to do. And then this guy, Cash Winston, has just done everything. Shot clock at five. Winston, the fadeaway, hit it over Pinson. From the street to Detroit, shades of Johnny Davis, George Ice Gervin. And Ice. foul called against Cassius Winston for a reach in his first. Ice Gervin, one of the original Nike endorsers. The very first one, Eli Nastasi. Number two, Steve Prefontaine. And when things changed irrevocably for two of the Nike family members, legends, Bowerman and Prefontaine, when they came home from the 72 Olympics and the massacre of the Israeli athletes, they were never the same again in their lives. Pre just died 
three years later, and then Bowerman went on to this legendary long life. But it was just never the same. That kind of stuff changes you forever. One out of two for Barry. Yes. <laughs> Winston oh. off on the three. Here comes Theo Pinson. Poked away. Ben Carter knocked it away from Andrew Playtech. The cerebral game of Ben Carter doesn't have the physical stability of this foundation wearing that big brace. You can only hope it's going to continue to improve. Zone look from the Tar Heels. Connor George from the corner. Look and the it. rebound hustling is Cassius Winston and a fresh shot clock for Michigan State. Cash. That's what Voodoo wants. That's what Tom Izzo has. Great ball movement. Oh, Ben Carter again. And a foul going for the rebound. See, the thing about Ben Carter is you can give him the ball at the high post and great things are going to happen. That weak side duck in by the big power guys, Tillman, Nick Ward. We haven't even seen Jaron Jackson tonight. Monday night football matchup, the Ravens and the Texans. Monday night countdown kicks off our coverage at 6 Eastern on ESPN. The floater by Winston and Luke May clears out for North Carolina. North Carolina has been so good coming in. I think they thought it was going to be easy. They have struggled from the outset against Michigan State tonight. And an arrow on the tie-up that goes with the Spartans with a minute 26 left in the first half. But Duke, when they played in Chicago early on the first week of the season when we were in China, Duke had 25 offensive rebounds against Michigan State. Duke played zone defense the entire game. We haven't seen North Carolina do that at all today. Well, they did that last possession go to a zone. Now it appears they're jumping back to a man to man. Let's take a moment here while they wipe up the beautiful floor here at the Moda Center and give credit to Mark Hollis, the great AD athletic director for Michigan State, who put this whole PK80 and the WPK80 together. And what a tournament it's been. Mark from Michigan, went to Michigan State, was roommates with Tom Izzo when Tom was a graduate assistant on the team, was the basketball manager Hollis was for Judd Heathcote, was Izzo's best man at his wedding. Hollis been at MSU since 95 when he was in the marketing department. He's been the head AD since 08. It was his vision for the original aircraft carrier games on 11-11-11 on the Carl Vincent in San Diego where these two teams met on a beautiful fall day. Joe wow. Barry missing wildly. Chilling everywhere. Pace here by Cash Winston. Did you ever see Johnny Davis or George Gervin play? I did see them play. I saw the Iceman play. Where? When? When I was enough. a little kid. Okay. When he was with the Spurs. Okay. Time out here on the court. Tom Izzo just. Michigan State timeout. They're up 15 on North Carolina championship game. North Carolina has 20 points. Twenty-eight teams. Fourteen matchups. All kinds of stars. That's absolutely beautiful. One challenge. The Big Ten ACC Challenge tomorrow night. So the Big Ten ACC Challenge starts tomorrow night. And continues Thursday when Notre Dame goes to East Lansing. <clears throat> Winston to the basket beats the shot clock. This is a clinic. Joe Barry races it up the floor and launches it. Oh! Maybe that'll wake the Tar Heels up. Hey, we got Phil Knight coming up at halftime. He's going to join us. The third quarter, too. Let's coming go. Coming up. Email your questions. North Carolina. In. Email your questions. Can make a in. game out of this championship game. To at Roxy.com. 37 <laughs> 23, Michigan State dominating the first half. Let's check in with Jeff Goodman.
Tom, you, you're up 14 with your two best players, most talented players in foul trouble. How have you been able to do it? My whole team's in foul trouble. I, I, I'm, I'm playing a walk-on again. But, you know, I thought our guys played so hard defensively, and that was a big difference. They missed some shots, and then they hit a tough shot at the end. But they're a very good team. I, I thought our defense was the key, and it got our running game going a little bit. But uh, we got to have those other guys back. You said... The, the offense was stagnant in the past, the last few games. How do you like it so far? Well, we're moving a little bit better at times. We're still dribbling the ball too much, if you ask me. But we're getting a little better at it. We've got to keep moving. But with the lineup we in, we changed our whole philosophy the last eight minutes just because of the players we had in there. Thanks, Doc. All right, Jeff. Well, Tom Izzo in Michigan State, they have the lead at the half despite this three at the horn from Joel Berry. It has been all Michigan State in the first half of this victory bracket championship game at the PK-80. Joshua Lankford leading all scorers with 15 as a 14-point lead for Michigan State. Roy Williams perplexed. His team needs a spark as we head to the second half. They need a spark. They need a volcanic eruption. Let's go. You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's, the PK-80. Presented by State Farm at the half of the Victory Bracket Championship game. Michigan State leading North Carolina 37-23. Joshua Lankford, 14 points to lead all scorers for the Spartans. Along with Bill Walton, Roxy Bernstein, we have a very special guest joining us, Phil Knight. Joining us here at courtside, he, of course, is the co-founder and chairman of Nike. And first off, this event in honor of your birthday, which is coming up in the, uh, yes. in what, in February? February, that's right. 24th. That's, oh, good for you. Yes. What do you think so far of the weekend well, and the basketball we've seen? You know, first of all, I thought they were never going to be able to pull this off. And about a month ago, I said, hey, this might really happen. It would be really cool if it did. And then it exceeded all expectations. It's been phenomenal. The greatest college basketball tournament ever. Congratulations. What are you doing tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to take tomorrow off. I've had a ball, but I've been busy. Are we getting ready for the PK-81? Yeah, no, it's not going to be a PK-81. When you take a day off, what do you do? Oh, you know, I just uh, relax. I, uh, I uh, go for what I call a long run, which is really a short walk. But, uh, but you've always and then I read a lot and, uh, and then be on the phone and talk to friends and go to dinner, that sort of thing. What are you reading now? Uh, I'm reading uh, Fates and Furies by uh, Lauren Groff. Uh, What's it about? It's a very unusual book about the relationship between man and a woman, which is uh, more complicated than I want to get into on this show. <laughs> uh. We're ready for our Sonic Blockbuster matchup. It is number four, Michigan State, and number nine, North Carolina. The first of two championship games coming your way tonight at the PK-80 in Portland is Theo Pinson with a bucket for the Tar Heels. And Phil, speaking of North Carolina, the, the impact of Michael Jordan had on you and your company. When you think about him and did, how much of an impact did it have with him taking Nike to the next level? Oh, huge. That uh, what, What's really remarkable, I think, is that, uh, the, that we're selling now four times, four or five times as much Jordan shoes and apparel than when he played. Which leads me to ask the question, how much would we have sold if he never played? <laughs> <laughs> has there ever been an athlete who has had that kind of impact on, on the sports business? No, I don't think so. It started out as an endorsement and became a brand, and that's everybody's dream. And it could have been yours, you know, but uh, you passed on us. <laughs> yeah, my biggest mistake ever. <laughs> I will get to that, believe me. <laughs> so, it's Phil, Nike was... A quote, crazy idea for you yeah. 55 years ago. Yep. What other crazy ideas have you had that you're looking forward to pursuing as time goes on? Well, I don't know. I've had a lot of crazy ideas that never amounted to anything, of course. And uh, But uh, I don't know. I've still got a lot of hopes. And uh, I'm not going to announce them on TV because they might fail as much as some of the others. <laughs> but you talk about failing fast in yes, Shoe Dog. absolutely. The number one New York Times bestseller. And where did you learn that? What was the failure that taught you to learn fast? Well, I think uh, it was just a, you know, kind of an obvious that uh, that you don't want to uh, go 15 years and fail. You want to get it over with and get on. Mm. Share with us some of the thoughts. You know, the pride of a dad with Travis. How Travis has done so well with his media company, his entertainment uh, contributions. Yes. Beam on about it being a dad. 
Well, I mean, basically, when he told me he wanted to make movies with puppets, I, I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I paid for your education to do this, and it was the same speech I'd made to my father that I want to sell shoes. So I right. said, well, I better give him some room. And your dad and said no, really. but he also... No, he that. didn't say no. He says, you break my heart, right. which okay. was worse, really. <laughs> but then your mom stood up and said, yeah, yep. you yep. go for it, and it was her quiet consent yep. and her love. Oh, my gosh, what a family story. Yeah. Shoe dog. Yeah. What's been, your... Thank you. And you've sold a lot of books. I want to thank you for that. <laughs> hey, the, the, I just reread it. It's a, one of the greatest books ever. Phil, so what's, what's your assessment right now in the state of college basketball? Well, I mean, basically this whole thing for me has really been uplifting as far as college basketball. Great coaches, great teams playing hard. It's still, you know, got... Uh, you know, huge upside, and it's really kind of in good shape. I, you know, we got to get through the FBI investigation part of it and uh, get it settled down. But uh, it's a it's a great game with great players and great coaches, and it's uh, it's got a great future. Speaking of great coaches, share with us something about Bill Bowerman. Well, he was uh, you know my coach, and uh, I thought the greatest track coach of all time. He was a very unique guy. Uh, there were times there when I was playing for him or running for him that uh, I wasn't so sure that was the case. A little bit like you with your coach. But uh, he was uh, very, very unique and uh, had unusual ways of getting your attention. <laughs> and, and that has extended to the relationship that you have with the current college coaches and the way that you've nurtured them and brought them all along in this incredible explosion of success on the business side of college basketball. Well, I've always thought, uh, you know, obviously from the upbringing with Barman that the coach was one of the greatest titles anybody could have. They impact kids' lives uh, the way that really kind of no other teacher does. And so I have a great respect for anybody with a title of coach, and we love being involved with these coaches. <laughs> I love being involved with these coaches. But he didn't want to be called he being Barman. He, he, he wanted to be called the professor of competitive greatness? Professor of competitive response. Oh, response, okay. Yeah, yeah. You brought it up earlier. I got to hear the story about how Bill <laughs> said no to you. <laughs> Well, you know, that basically, yeah, we wanted him to wear the shoes and uh, we're willing to pay a few dollars to do it and he wouldn't give us the time of day. So, But that wasn't unusual. Uh, that was not and an you unusual. you talked to him. That wasn't an unusual response at the time and we've overcome that finally. <laughs> it was the biggest mistake, biggest professional mistake of my life. And Phil has told me that, like John Wooden did, Bill, you're the slowest learner I've ever come across. <laughs> and, and Lori seconds that emotion. <laughs> How's yeah. Penny, how's Penny She's doing? She's good. She's having a ball sitting right down sitting there. Right She's really enjoying here. it. Yeah. How many she years? thinks she thinks the PK80 stands for uh, Penny Knight and I'm the 80. <laughs> 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 Who are your business heroes? And, oh, why, I and think, why? You know, I mean, uh, Warren Buffett obviously is uh, near the top of the list because he's just been uh, managed his business so successfully with such integrity for such a long period of time. But uh, the, you know, the, the Steve Jobs was, was great. There have been a lot of great ones that, uh, that you, you respect. Your advice to the dreamers, to the young entrepreneurs who were just getting started, besides reading Shoe Dog? Well, I think, that, you know, the kids today are smarter than ever before. They're kind of afraid to fail, some of them. And that's, uh, my advice is don't be afraid to fail. Just the only time you can't fail is the last time you try. Describe your current workout schedule. I know you've been an athlete your whole time. You were cut from the baseball team growing up, but you've always been a runner ever since your mom said you might want to try track. What are you doing these days? Well, basically, uh, running was always was my thing, and I think it's really good for everybody to be physically active. But my knees have kind of given out, so my running is so slow that I have to confess it's a walk. But uh, so I have to walk a lot of miles, which I do probably 10, 12 miles a day. But I listen to books uh, while I'm doing it, so it's useful. When they approached you about this event, what was your first reaction? Well, Mark Collis, it was his idea for Michigan State, and I said, it's a great, great honor. It'd be the greatest birthday ever, but I said, I really don't think he can pull it off. And uh, sure enough, he did. And it's great to see all these teams in what an unbelievable weekend of basketball. And you've been front and center for most of it. You, you've enjoyed a lot of the basketball I've, this I've weekend. I've had a ball going back and forth between the two arenas, and there have been great games, and uh, every, I couldn't have enjoyed it more. It's better than I thought it could be. Better than perfect. It's Oregon. <laughs> it's the National Park. It's our country's heritage. Here comes happy Tum -tum. birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday uh, to you. A special 
One of a kind. Let's put that up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what my a, God. Maybe the best portrait ever. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. That's a big thank surprise. You, and I'm very thank grateful. you. Happy birthday, Phil. Cat thank Daddy. you so much for joining us. Thanks very much. Phil, Phil Knight. Knight, courtside at the PK80. His 80th birthday coming up. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You're watching ESPN Sonic Blockbuster. It is the championship game of the victory bracket at the PK-80 as Michigan State leading North Carolina. It was a 14-point game at the half. It's a 10-point lead for the Spartans. So North Carolina is coming back. Signs of life for the Tar Heels. In and out for Tum Tum Nair. One more coming. Foul was on Joel Barry. Knowing that you do not like to read, I'm hesitant to ask if you read Tom Izzo's tribute to Judd Heathcote on September 3rd after T Judd Heathcote passed away in late August. I did read that. You did read that. I did oh, read that, Bill. Finally, a positive response. Oh, my gosh. That was powerful. It was a moving tribute to Judd Heathcote, who gave Tom Izzo his opportunity. Well, Michigan State's only had three coaches in the last, well, since 1969. I can't do that math. Do you want me to do it for you? 38 years, 48 years. 48, 48 years, okay. On the tie-up, Arrow goes to Michigan State. And this year's opener, you know, Judd Heathcote, he used to wear that green blazer all the mm -hmm. time, right? So this year's opener for Michigan State, Tom Izzo in honor of Judd, who had just recently passed away. Tom wore that green blazer. And then they crushed North Florida by 30. And then the opening possession of the game, in honor also to Judd Heathcote, Tom Izzo played a matchup zone, which was the signature defense for Heathcote and the mighty Spartans. Great defensive rotation, Luke May. Lob for Bridges broken up. North Carolina comes away with it. Theo Pinson. Corner three. The transition defense for the Spartans has just been tremendous. Their defense all around has been terrific tonight. Really? Carolina just one of 11 from three and overall shooting just 24% for the game. If that doesn't improve, they're not going to win. It's tough to win when you got numbers like that. Offense wins championship. You got to be able to fill it up. Shot clock at yeah. 10. The Tar Heels might need to bring out Bob McAdoo. Joshua Langford from the corner. 17 now for Langford. The team game, the motto of Miles Bridges, when he made his announcement that he was coming back, he said, it's not about me, it's about us. And that team concept has just carried out th from the opening tip tonight. Nair to the Beautiful. basket off the feed from Bridges, and Michigan State has matched their largest lead of the night. Tom Tom, Tizam, Lou Rawls, Mona Lisa, everybody bends down and slaps the floor. Shades of Kevin Garnett, who never even went to college. Beautiful. He's got to finish that. And Garrison Brooks does for his first points of the night. The good thing, the only good thing to date for North Carolina is that these four young freshmen who populate the front line for Roy Williams, they're going to learn how much work they've got to do. Corner three. Career high 20 for Joshua Lankford. Joshua Langford from Huntsville, Alabama when he was 12 and on the verge of becoming a high school player of the year in the state of Alabama as an eighth grader. He had bacterial meningitis. Not something that you look to get. No. Langford has just done everything. Spotting up perfectly. The spacing for the Spartans has just been perfect. In transition, Tum Tum just out quicks him. That's what Joel Berry needed to do early on when he got caught from behind. If, you're, if your best players don't outplay their best players, you're not going to win. It's not about strategy. It's not about calling plays. And it's been a tough night for Luke May, just six points. 
And he's such a good player, such a good dude. And he's now two of seven from the line, two of nine from the field. The oldest of four boys, Luke May, who turned down valuable scholarships to other top-tier programs so he could walk on at North Carolina. Great defense, Luke May. Ten to shoot, Nairn. To the basket. Gets the roll. Sterling Manley has to come out on the court. You know, he's just a freshman and playing against the high schoolers. You cannot try to out jump these guys with their runners. You know, the way that guys like Lenny Wilkins and John Stockton and Guy Rogers used to make those fantastic little eight foot runners. That has become such a commonplace in the game today. You're never going to block shots at the rim. You got to come out on the floor and stop them. Largest lead for Michigan State. Victory bracket championship game as Luke May Beautiful. with the hoop for Carolina. Ton of time left. North Carolina just got to find some sort of rhythm, some sort of style and identity that will be successful. Great screen by Nick Ward. And one more championship game still to oh. come. <laughs> as poor Sterling Manley. He went just crashing into Chris Rastatter on the baseline, our official. But coming up next, the motion bracket championship between number one Duke and number seven Florida. This is our bracket for the victory bracket. So, wait a second. They're calling a foul on Sterling Manley there? The guy was run over by a truck. How much does Nick Ward look like Rick Mahorn? It's a good comparison. Third foul on Sterling Manley. So Sterling Manley, who is being pushed around out here right now, what a great family history. His great, great uncle was a star quarterback at Michigan State and went on to become, his name is Willie Thrower, which is the perfect name. Perfect name for a quarterback. Other than Sonny Six Killer. <laughs> but steal by Brandon Robinson. Terrible fast break. Oh my Turned God. over by the Tar Heels who have been just out of whack offensively all night. Sterling Manley's great great uncle Willie Thrower went on to become the first black quarterback in the history of the NFL in the early 50s for the Chicago Bears. The pull up and a foul is called on Jaleek Whoa. Felton. Mental mistakes for the Tar Heels, inexcusable. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for savings on all things winter. And Heineken, open your world, enjoy responsibly. At least the Tar Heels have their beautiful state to fall back on. It's been a tough championship game for Roy Williams in North Carolina. Some frustration for the Tar Heels. And, Bill, they've been out of sorts all night. Poor spacing, physically intimidated. The senior leadership, the veteran leadership, has been non-existent. Their best players have not been able to get anything going offensively, and they turn a three-on-two fast break into a scoring opportunity for the other team. And Roy Williams, oh, my gosh, he can... Thankfully looked back to his ninth grade algebra class when he met his wife Wanda in Asheville, North Carolina, one of the most beautiful spots on earth. Roy Williams told me at halftime, you know, his team wasn't the aggressor and the guys that he really wants to step up are those young freshmen, but certainly he felt like they were playing deer in headlights. They just weren't going hard and were intimidated by the big stage. And they have not played like a Carolina team we're used to seeing here tonight. Just 27% shooting, 15 turnovers. They're one of 11 on threes, and Michigan State has blocked seven shots. In the city of Roses, Portland, a lot of teams have come in here and been intimidated, mostly by the towering presence of Maurice Lucas, number 20 in your program, number one in your heart. His number retired behind us. His children, his offspring, David and Kristen, are here in attendance sitting courtside. 
And a foul will put Matt McQuaid back at the free throw line for Michigan State with just over 11 minutes to go. Were they intimidated by you and you had not by me? The they were intimidated. The they were intimidated by Maurice Lucas, who literally scared every opponent and single-handedly ruined many a star's career. But that's one thing that Tom Izzo is about, which was the same thing that Maurice Lucas was about, and that's building the team, developing the loyalty, the pride, the camaraderie, all the things that Phil Knight has done with Nike. Tom Izzo's got an abundance of that with this Spartan franchise that he has. Sterling Manley to miss. And the way he's incorporated the alums and the former players, for example, Draymond Green just donated right. over $3 million to help build a new facility for Michigan State basketball. Good for him. Think how much more money Draymond would have if he would get, quit getting ejected from championship games. He did win a championship last year. Never pass on a chance to win the championship. Never let the show get in the way of the game. But Tom Izzo, who twice a year has a former player's reunion at his house. Now, I've never been to his house, traveling violation, but I've heard it's a very nice house and a very big house. Not as big as the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina, Roy Williams' hometown, the largest house in the world. Are 255 rooms. 255 rooms for a house. Are you inviting yourself over to Tom Izzo's house? That's the strength of my game. <laughs> Being someplace where I don't belong. As like, an uninvited guest. Like here at the table? Yes. Come on, Sterling, let's go. Send it back. I tell you, Nick Ward. No, yeah, that's Nick Ward in transition. Running the floor. Tease him. Oh, that's not traveling. Oh, that's just exquisite fit work, footwork. Footwork, please. But you've really been impressed with his game. Today. I've been impressed. He did. He travel. did pick it up. Yeah. He shuffled his feet. That was a lot of. Please. <laughs> That'd be a great move at the Crystal Ballroom where we spent. What day was that? We're dancing with that the stars. Tuesday or Wednesday or Monday. I don't know. It all rolls into run. Jimmy in the crystal ballroom. Oh my gosh. The floating dance floor where they adjust they adjust the tension of the float. That may be what North Carolina needs right now to have the float adjusted. Or some of the new Joel Berry ice cream by Ben and Jerry. They need to fix something because Tom Izzo's team tonight has really suffocated them. With their defense, look, how much but, but look, is it that but, North Carolina is not doing, or is it what Michigan State's doing to them? Every player for Michigan State has played well. And who has played up to their potential for North Carolina? Nobody. No, you know, no wonder it's a 19 or 19 or 21 point. That's I 21. Can't, I can't though. figure that 54 out. 54 yeah. minus 33. I do know that Nike stock is up 31,000 percent since they went public. And you neglected to take part in it. <laughs> and you had an opportunity. It's my fault. Look, <laughs> Phil was very kind, extremely generous. It was just not my deal. I had no interest in business. Jump ball. It stays with North Carolina. It's a good thing he had a mind for business. Well, he went to business school. His dad was the publisher of the Oregon Journal. And Phil tells so many phenomenal stories in Shoe Dog. One that stands out right now is that when he was a very young boy, that in the family home down in Roseburg, where Phil's family ultimately came from, before they, the parents moved to Portland, they would sit on the front porch in Roseburg during the summertime and listen to the radio broadcast of what was going on during World War II and how the news was always negative every single day, and it was just so depressing for everybody. And then Phil tells that one day when the voice came on the radio and said, today we have good news from the front, and everything changed. What a story, Shoe Dog. In the PK-80, this is the Victory Bracket Championship game, and his two schools taking part in the PK-80, where he did his undergrad 
studies at Oregon and his graduate work at Stanford. And taught at Portland State, where he met Penny, who was a student. And Portland State had an impressive effort against Duke. They led for a lot of that ball game until Duke came back and won in the second half. As Michigan State headed back to the foul line and Duke coming up next in the victory, or rather the motion bracket championship game against number seven, Florida. Roxy, the only thing more meaningless than the halftime score of a basketball game is the final score of an NBA exhibition game. <laughs> but I want to, I just love to revisit that story where Ito from Nisho, the Japanese trading company that saved Nike. When Ito sat there and looked at those bankers who were throwing Phil out the door, and Ito's question was, how much is it? How much is it? And then he pushed the check for the entire amount across the table, and the rest is history. Thank you, Ito. Thank you, Nisho. And when they walked out the door, Ito looked at Phil and said, there is so much more to business and life than just the numbers. And there's more of this championship game coming up. It has been all Michigan State. Joshua Langford at career high 20. And the Spartans are up 21. Coming up, it'll be the motion bracket championship game. Number one, Duke will take on number seven, Florida. That is the finale of the PK-80 at the Moda Center in Portland. As Marvin Bagley will be on display, I know you're excited to watch the freshman for Duke. Absolutely, I'm looking forward to an excellent game. Jalen Hudson will lead the Florida Gators, and they had a wild ball game here Friday night and a terrific win for them. Michigan Tim's State hasn't Saga. even needed Miles Bridges, who is not, I'm told, related to Lloyd or Bo or Bill. The Bridge School, the Bridge Benefit Concert, the St. John's Bridge, or the Golden Gate Bridge. There's a foul inside, and it's on Michigan State and I, Tillman. I love Bridges. That's, it's really the ultimate tool because it allows you to get someplace you can't get on your own. There's a lot of bridges here in Portland as well. 12 between the Willamette Falls and the St. John's Bridge on the north, including the Tillicum Bridge, which is the largest, longest non-car bridge in America. And you rode across it this week, didn't you, Bill? I rode a bike across it. Beautiful pass. Theo Pinson lays it up in transition, and the first Tar Heel in a double figures, he has 10. With seven and a half to go, that's the first Tar Heel in double figures, my gosh. First field goal in five minutes for North Carolina. Theo Pinson is down. Matt McQuaid just rattles out a three. Just take a foul. And the loose ball, there is Joel Berry with it for North Carolina. Pinson now finally to his feet. I hate to see that. This is a great player and a wonderful dude. So Theo Pinson, as they stop play, Keith Kimball, our referee, working with Chris Rastatter and Michael Stevens on this victory bracket championship game. And they will go to the monitor to see what exactly happened to Pinson. So while they do that, let's give some credit to Bob McAdoo and his historical significance. I mean, this great Tar Heel program has given us so many players. Michael Jordan, James Worthy, Billy Cunningham, but Bob McAdoo, a five-time NBA All-Star, an MVP in the regular season. Twice he finished second. Bob also won three straight scoring titles in the NBA. Whoa. As Jaron Jackson coming across and made contact with Pinson, and that's what the officials are looking at. There it is in the bottom right of your screen. You wonder, from this angle, looks like there was contact. On the, on the way across. So. But the other angle we saw from the baseline, but, it looked like there may have been some space. 
between. And that's what the officials are reviewing here to see if it warrants anything to Jaron Jackson Jr. as Pinson got knocked down on the play. Can you name the other six players who won at least three straight scoring titles in NBA history? And won three straight yeah. besides Michael Jordan? Well, that's one. That's okay. a, always a good guess. It's always a good guess to throw Wilt in. I was going to get ready to throw him in there. How okay. about Kareem? No. Uh, George Mikan and Neil Johnston from before my time, but then a D Detroit inner city guy who we talked about earlier in the broadcast. George Gervin. George Gervin. And then one of our favorite players today plays for the Warriors of the Golden State. Kevin Durant. Yes, of course. So that's the play they're still trying to figure out if it warrants anything against Jaron Jackson Jr. as Pinson got knocked down on the play. Yeah. We'll have to get little Timmy to zoom in on this. That elbow coming across. Right. Well, and that, from that angle, it looks a little bit different in terms of the contact. So, so are you saying that Theo Pinson is is a Sonny Liston winner of the Academy Award for just going down with a phantom punch? I'm not saying that. Now maybe there was some embellishment from Pinson. That happens. It, it's, that happens awfully fast to have that kind of embellishment. I don't know. I can't see it from that angle. It, it's hard to tell. It, it really is. Now the first angle, it looks like that probably was contact. The second one, it's tough. You can do whatever want you want. You're the ref. <laughs> Michael Stevens coming over. He wants to see our replay again. So, Doctor No, show the referee right, right there. And so he just, Michael Stevens saw what he needed to see, goes back to consult with Chris Rastatter and Keith Kimball. So as, as a matter of professional and, and human decency and courtesy, you have a responsibility as a basketball player to keep your elbows below the guy, uh, below the guy's neck. You know, body contact, elbows, body contact, you know, into someone's midsection from the shoulders to above the knee. That's all part of the game. So they're going to assess a flagrant one to Jaron Jackson Jr., which means he can stay in the game. It'll be two free throws for North Carolina, and the Tar Heels will get possession of the ball. So a flagrant one assessed to Jackson, which is also a personal, which is his third foul of the ball game. But there's no conclusive evidence that there was contact made. It's hard to tell. It really is. And the first angle that we saw from the basket on the near side of the play it looked like, okay, that there probably was something, but then. But Theo went down like a rock. And I've never known Theo Pinson to be a, a flopper. He'll have one more shot, and again, North Carolina will get the ball. So Pinson hits both. And we'll see how that stoppage of play and the change of momentum plays out here, if North Carolina can try to capitalize on that. The lead was 21. It's down to 17. With seven minutes to go in this championship game at the victory bracket at the PKA. So five straight three-pointers. Here we go, and North Carolina is right back in it. Joel Berry. That ball was tipped by a great defense of Miles Bridges. And Michigan State's defense has been terrific all night. Oh, really? You've noticed? I have. I can figure that out. I've been I've been impressed. Because I didn't know if Michigan State would be able to play at the exquisite level that North Carolina consistently performs at. And here's Kenny Williams, who's been a non-factor. Theo Pinson oh. lays it in. He seems to have recovered quickly. A lot quicker than Sonny Liston ever did. <laughs> did you ever elbow anyone? No. Never? A few people ran into my elbow. <laughs> and that's... 
A turnover on Michigan State. 21 turnovers by the Spartans tonight. The Tar Heels coming right at you. Their feet are not sticking to the floor right now. It's pinching out in front of everybody. And not even the greatness of Miles Bridges could stop that fast break. Next thing you're going to tell me is that Kevin McHale never closed line Kurt Rambis. That was an that, illusion. No, that was an offensive foul on Kurt Rambis <laughs> with his throat on Kevin's forearm. Theo Pinson from Dean. I tell you, Nick Ward, player of the game. You know, you, you little pretty boys, you'll be talking about Langford's uh, jumpers and runners. Uh, Nick Ward is dominating. You like dominated. the dirty work. Men are made in the paint, and you've got to, you have to dominate the paint. What are they calling here? And it's on Ward. Please. For a push off, and it's the second on Ward. And Ward tonight, seven points, eight rebounds, but it's more than just the numbers that he's putting up. He's controlling the lane. Nick Ward just positioning himself, holding off Luke May. He has four block shots in the game also. Nick Ward has four blocks. He shots. has four blocks. But he has established the physical presence. Whoa. And a foul. It's the fourth on Joshua Lankford. But the physical presence that Ward has laid on the Tar Heels, you know, has completely taken them out of any chance of defining the terms of the conflict. And making the Spartans play the Tar Heel game. Wow. Miss from Williams. The lowest point total for they North Carolina under Roy Williams points. is 43 against Tony Bennett in Virginia late last February. Yeah, but they but, can do that. But to Tony you. Bennett is going to slow it down. Tom Izzo hasn't slowed it down at all. He wants to run, and they have been they have been the faster team, they've been the, the better team. North Carolina shooting only 28%, but they've scored seven in a row to try to get back into this game. But the team game that is Tom is travel on there. And that's the one area where Michigan State has struggled in this game tonight. Yeah, they're not shooting it great. Their defense has been phenomenal. Yeah, but, but they've they now turned it over 23 times in 23 this game. times and they're ahead by 14. <laughs> I guess Coach Wooden was right. It's the team that has the most turnovers wins. As long as those turnovers are out of commission. And they've not gone eight minutes, Michigan State, without a field goal. And they're leading by 14. Tough shot from Luke May. Chased down by Pinson. And a foul on Miles Bridges, his third. And Theo Pinson to the line for North Carolina. The resume of Tom Izzo, eight times coach of the year 18 draft picks in the NBA nine of them in the first round seven final fours nine final fours in the last 18 years 10 All-Americans two player of the year winners Draymond Green and Denzel Valentine seven Big Ten titles and five conference tourney champions Big Ten which has 14 teams is going to have their conference tournament in Madison Square Garden this year. But because of scheduling and the Big East having Are you going to go? I'll be busy. One more for Pinson. So they're going to play their conference tournament a week earlier than everybody else because they want to play it in Madison Square Garden. And the Big East already has the building reserved. But they're going to have a whole week off between the, their conference tournament and the start of the, the real tournament. And a timeout taken by Michigan State. 4.23 to go. North Carolina within 12. Michigan State leading by as many as 21 in this championship game. Tom Izzo saved them. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm and in part by Sonic's Car Hop Classic. Pair a foot long coney or a cheeseburger with onion rings 
for $2.99. Onion rings at the Portland Zoo. Here we go. City at night, city of lights. A moment ago, this happened in the Michigan State huddle as Tom Izzo trying to get his team refocused here for this championship game against North Carolina. Michigan State and the Tar Heels in the victory bracket championship game and North Carolina trying to come back. They've scored nine in a row to close within 12. I'm told there's a controversy here in uh -oh. the Moda Center tonight, yes. Between you and me? No, oh, heavens, okay. no, that's not a controversy. That's just a one-sided affair. But Very true. David Lucas, who's sitting courtside, Maurice's son, he's got a jacket on with a big M on it. And some of the Michigan State fans are thinking that that is a Michigan jacket. That is a Marquette jacket. That was his dad, Maurice's Letterman's jacket from Marquette in the mid-1970s. So please lay off of David Lucas. Bridges to the basket. 11 for Miles Bridges. He played just down the road at Oregon State, right? Played at Oregon State. He's an excellent player. Whoa. Luke May. He misses a layup. North that Carolina was Miles has Bridges. A and number of layups tonight. They have been pushed around. And this is going to be as, uh, an eye opening learning moment for the Tar Heels. And so Roy Williams is going to have to go have a talk with Doug Halverson, the trainer, and Jonas Sarishan, a strength and conditioning coach. 57-43, Michigan State leading North Carolina in the championship game. This has been a one-sided whooping, and everyone for Michigan State continues to just play fantastic. And when you get a wide-open layup and you get caught from behind, there is no chance to win a big game like this. Time to check out our assist of the game, brought yeah, to you by love State it. Farm. And it's Miles Bridges. The cross-court pass for North Carolina is not working. Luke May is fading away, pulling himself back from the defense, and then with everybody playing in sync, Tum Tum, Lou Rawls, Mona Lisa, those are his parents, just able to get out there and get it done. It's not about me, Miles Bridges, it's about us. And not, it's not a lot what we has have worked to, for North Carolina tonight. It's not what we have to do, it's what we get to do. The privilege of being part of something so very special. Whoa. So they're the shooting woes for the Tar Heels tonight. 25% overall. They've missed 13 layups in this game. 13 layups and 14 threes, and only made one three. And how many layups have they made? They have made 12. Oh they're shooting gosh. under 50% on their layups. They're 12 of 25. <laughs> Jackson a three. Nice. What a beautiful prospect Jaron Jackson is. And he's barely 18 years old, right? Again, coming up next, the motion bracket championship, number one Duke and number seven Florida. And when you look at the history of this great Michigan State program, doesn't have the overall success long term as North Carolina. But when you've got somebody like Steve Smith, Class of 91, who was Tom Isso's first major recruit as an assistant coach. And Steve Smith is just as fine a human being as you'll ever come across. Huge donor to the program, built the first ever academics center on campus. He's from downtown Detroit himself, and he named that academic center after his mom, Clarabelle. Thank you, Steve Smith, on behalf of the human race. So in the closing moments here, what was the last line of Shoe Dog? The very last written word. Joe Barry missing a three. You want to hand me the book and I can recite it. Go ahead. The very last line of the book. Penny, I couldn't have done it without you. It's a love story. And the incredible success 
I'm a dream coming true in your hometown, your home state. The executive retreats that they used to have for Nike over in Sun River on the Metolius River. You ever been to that river? I have not. Shot what? clock winding down. Michigan State, Bridges gets the shot off. And the rebound, Andrew Plato. I still can't believe you turned him down. <laughs> I, I still have not gotten over that one. Theo Pinson missing a three. Best rebound of the night, best athletic play that Miles Bridges has made in this tournament. And the raucous crowd here comes to their feet as one, saluting the brilliance of this Spartan team. Wow. Suffocating defense for Michigan State all night long. And just, they never let North Carolina get comfortable. Focus, discipline, all the great things that make Nike feel like what they are. Okay. There's Grayson like Allen, the Blue Devils, getting it's loose in the hallway for the championship game of the motion bracket. Looks like the aerobic Florida. class at the Mac Club this morning at 6 a.m. That's not you on top of the basket, is that? No, but that is, I believe, the championship celebration from 1977 with the Portland Trailblazers, the youngest team to ever win the championship. But when you speak about championships, let's talk about the history of Michigan State. And the fact that Clifton Wharton was the first black president of any major college in our country. The Spartans stepping up. Duffy Doherty, who in an era of segregation would go down into the deep south and recruit black players to come to Michigan State and say, we've got a home for you. And the national championship tradition of the Spartans setting the tone for the future of America. Thank you, Michigan State. Seventh Woods misses the floater. Out of bounds, it stays with North Carolina. Coming up after the ball game, after the Duke Florida matchup, Sports Center, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. Wrap up your weekend with Sports Center as we take a look at the marquee matchup in LA between the Saints and the Rams. And is this Tom Brady's most impressive season yet? Marvin Bagley on display. Sports Center on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. They misspelled Chris Mullen's name on there. They put an E in there. He's got an I in there. M U L L I N. Right. Yeah. You can't misspell somebody's name on the promo. Please. 33.9 to go. Did you watch the 66 Rose Bowl between Michigan State and UCLA? I wasn't born yet, Bill. You're kidding. Believe it or not, it wasn't around for that. You're younger than I thought. Michigan State comes in as the number one team in the country, and UCLA beat up. 23 for Joshua Lankford, extending his career high. Gary Beaven, Bobby Styles, changed Beaven my won a life. Heisman Trophy, right? Yeah, only Heisman Trophy in UCLA history against Michigan State. This has been just a miserable performance offensively for North Carolina. The lowest field goal percentage in a game in program history. Wow. And they are one for 18 from three, which is also the worst in Tar Heel history. And look at how happy all the Spartans are. The handshake between two great champions, Roy Williams, Tom Izzo. Tom comes out for the first time ever beating Roy while Roy has been at North Carolina. The reigning champions go down for the first time this season. And the Michigan State Spartans are champions of the victory bracket of the PK-80 Invitational as they dispatch North Carolina 63-45. Joshua Lankford, a career-high 23 points to lead the Spartans. And let's send it over to Jeff Goodman. Tom, you came up, you allowed just 45 points to North Carolina. How'd you do it? Well, we really were good defensively. I thought Carolina missed some shots. They're a really good team. They missed some shots early, but I thought our defense was really, really good, and our offense, we hung in there. What does it mean to you to win this event, to get a championship? Well, I think you got to learn how to win championships, and, you know, this is a preseason one, but it's still a championship, and, you know, to do it on the Phil Knight Classic, guy that spent so much the basketball with, with the top nine teams four of them here left means a lot to me all right so i want to know what's up with the hoodie uh, you know phil gives us stuff we decided to wear all his stuff so i wore this on championship night you gotta keep it going i uh, know 
I won't wear it. Done. All right. It's a good fashion statement. It is. Thanks, man. Awesome, Jeff. Well, congratulations to Michigan State. They are the champions of the victory bracket. Coming up next, it'll be the championship game of the motion bracket. Number one, Duke. Number seven, Florida. Can't wait for that one. Thank you, Phil, for our lives. For Bill and Jeff, I'm Roxy. Adnan Burke, Seth Greenberg, take it away.